Buick is looking to modernize their cars, bring some more appeal to the younger crowd, the young professionals, the young families. This thing is still sub $30,000. It actually starts around $23,500. They brought in the slimmer logo. They've updated a lot of the styling here, a little bit of a sportier design than you're used to see with Buick. Let's go ahead and talk about what you get with the 2024 Buick Invista. Under the hood here, we have a peppy little 1.2 liter three cylinder with a turbocharger. You know, it is not the biggest motor. It's making 137 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque. Not a ton of power, not a ton of torque, but the turbocharger really does help. It is actually quite peppy. We'll talk about that a little bit more during the drive, but the thing only weighs around 3000 pounds. Um, and that power is going through the front wheels. There is no all wheel drive available for the Invista. And the transmission for this is gonna be eight, six speed automatic transmission. As in terms of fuel economy, you're looking at about 30 miles per gallon. That's the EPA estimate. I've been getting closer to 26, but I have kind of been stomping on it a little bit more than most people probably would if I were to own this car. I'm trying to push it a little bit. Um, so I'm getting closer to 26, which really is not too bad, all things considered. From the side here, you can really get a feel for the shape of it. It's kind of like a small crossover coupe slash sedan hatchy thing with a little bit of a lift. They're calling it a small crossover. It's kind of got cross tour vibes going on, but it is an interesting shape. It's a little bit sporty looking with the sloped roof and all the blacked out stuff, uh, but you do still get that little bit of ground clearance added. This color is called Moonstone Gray. I'd love to see it in the blue color that GM offers. I think that one's gonna look really nice on this thing, especially with all the black trim. All this gloss black is because this is the Sport Touring um, and the blacked out wheels as well. Those are only because this is the Sport Touring. Now these wheels are the 19s. It would normally come on 18s or if you're in the base trim, it'd be 17s, but you can option the 18s. In the Sport Touring, it's 18s or you can option the 19s. Uh, and then in the Avenir, it's 19s only. But this one, when you upgrade from the 18s to the 19s, you still get all seasons. That's true across the board. You're always gonna be on all seasons. But when you upgrade to the 19s in the Sport Touring, then you also get the Watts Link suspension, the upgraded suspension. We'll talk about that a little bit more during the drive, but nice long wheelbase, 106 inches, at least long for what this car is it's about 182 inches overall which is going to be about on par with your mazda cx-5 a little bit smaller than your crv a little bit bigger than your hrv sort of in between there about on par with a rav4 uh in terms of overall length but you do have the sort of coupe thing going on so it's got a bit of a different look to it uh as compared to those Again, the gloss black here for the mirrors, that's part of the sport touring as well. But the integrated turn signals here, as well as the heat are gonna be standard. This one has the blind spot monitoring added. You do have to add that on the bottom two trims. Unfortunately, that should be standard really, I feel. Um, but at this price point, I guess you gotta cut costs somewhere, but I would definitely option that blind spot monitoring. These are power adjustable, but manual fold. They're not gonna fold when you park it or anything like that. The keyless access here is an option. You do have to add that. It's just the single button here that GM does like to do. So there's no inside. It's just the outside button. Uh, that is not in the back. There's no keyless access in the back. They did a nice job with the look of it, though the overall shape is still a little bit strange, a little bit out there. But I guess with all the EVs coming down the pike, we're getting used to things being a little bit more out there. Front end here, we've got the slim down logo. Once again, we've got these nice sleek lights. I really like these lights, kind of giving me Genesis vibes, um, but I do like the look of them a lot and they actually do work pretty well at night. I was really surprised even being so thin. LED daytime running lights, LED headlights, auto high beams, auto headlights are standard no matter what trim level you're in here. Nice big open grill, lots of actual venting going on and the inner cooler poking through since this one does have that turbocharger. We do have the sensors up front here as well. 
I just really like the way they've done this front end, especially when you just look at it from sort of like this angle over here. It's a really nice look to it. They did a great job. This contour through here. <laughs> yeah, definitely a nice looking front end. For the back end here, we got the new logo, that sort of slimmer looking logo going on, trying to modernize things a little bit, as well as the spacing and the lettering here on the Buick. Again, trying to modernize things, more gloss black and the ST since we are in the sport touring trim. I love these lights. These are LED lights. I love the way they did those. They look really nice here. Uh, we do have the backup camera back here. Again, this sloped roof, it kind of cuts into the hatch a little bit. I wish they would have just squared it off, but I do, you know, I do understand they're sort of going for that sportier look to it uh, but you do lose a little bit of function when you go for form sometimes now this one does have the power lift gate right here on the key that is not standard that one does have to be option double tap that got the privacy cover going on and this one opens up into about 20.7 cubic feet of space so it is still a ton of space um, i just wish they would have squared it off made it a little bit more usable even than it already is not a ton going on back here. Uh, a couple of hooks as well as your 60-40 split on the seats with the child anchors back there. Underneath the floor here, we actually have a spare tire. I never thought I would be excited to see a spare tire. But all these new cars are coming with fix-a-flat kits nowadays and those things are kind of useless. I'm really glad to see an actual spare. And again, since this one has the power lift gate, just hit that button for the world's slowest close. Now this one also has remote start option. That is not standard, but if you get it, it is right there on the key, that sort of circular button. You do have to lock it up first and then hold that button down and it'll start right up. For the interior here, we are still sub $30,000 here with the new car price average being somewhere around 48,000. So we're not looking super premium high end here. But one thing GM does really well is they make the interior feel like it is a little bit nicer than what the price point may dictate. So even though there are some hard plastics, for sure quite a few hard plastics, there is some gloss black here, which I really don't like. But a lot of the touch points, a lot of the things that are in your line of sight are nice. We've got the leather wrapped um, dash here with blue stitching. We got the leather wrapped seats with the blue stitching, uh, even through the door here. It, it, they make it feel a little bit nicer than what the price point may dictate. Now each trim here sort of has their own personality. The base one is gonna be a cloth with a leatherette. Uh, and this one being the sport touring has the leatherette with the blue stitching to make it a little bit more sporty looking. I really like the look of the interior in here actually with the blue stitching all around. If you are in the Avenir, then it's gonna be a little bit more premium feeling still $30,000 car, not super high end, but you get the leather seats with the perforated leather with the white or black with a different color stitching, like the terracotta stitching. So it's going to be a little bit more of a, a fancier look to it, whereas this one has the more sporty look. Now the Avenir is more expensive, but this one with all of the convenience packages that it has, it has a convenience one and convenience two, as well as the experience Buick package. It's basically optioned out to the point where it has everything that the Avenir is going to have other than those seats and other than the air purifier. Um, so those packages are going to get you the heated steering wheel, the heated seats, the power adjustable seats, the wireless charger and the moon roof. But everything else is going to be standard here in the Sport Touring. The base seats here would have been six-way manual, but these are upgraded to the eight-way power adjustable with the lumbar support. The lumbar support is not super aggressive. That's not a deal breaker on this particular car, but for a daily drive, they're fine. And the heat is nice. No ventilation option, period. The steering wheel, leather wrapped. It's nice. It's not super premium again, but it is, you know, for the price point, it's nice. It's got the big buttons laid out well. They're not haptic or anything. We have buttons, we have switches. It's easy to use for your infotainment, for your voice control, for your adaptive cruise or your, or your regular cruise. The adaptive cruise is actually part of a safety package that is, has been added to this one. 
but otherwise that would just be your regular cruise. There are buttons on the back. GM likes to put buttons on the back for your tuning as well as your volume. So I don't always mention that in my other GM videos, but that is something to take note of in case you're not used to reaching back there. No paddle shifters or anything, just adjustment. We do actually have stocks in this one. This one does have rain sensing wipers and part of that convenience package. Um, auto high beams are standard. Auto headlights are standard. Now behind the steering wheel, we have this big tacked on screen thing that everybody's going to nowadays, but this one has a lot more black space. It's got like a smaller screen here and a decent sized infotainment screen here, but it does seem like there's more black space than there is actual screen space almost. Um, and it does have a bit of a tacked on feel. It does feel like this is gonna get all fingerprinty and all dusty and all that but they did keep the gauge cluster simple here it has your standard stuff with your range your coolant temperature your current speed uh, if you've got your cruise control set it'll tell you that it actually has a distance monitor it'll tell you how many seconds behind the person in front of you you are which is kind of a cool little touch the infotainment here is fairly simple uh, it has your apple carplay android auto which are standard wireless across the board definitely a nice touch you've got climbing control settings as well as vehicle settings your safety settings um, there's a buckle to drive setting there's a teen driver setting as well there that you can use to make sure your teenage son or daughter is not turning off some of the features here so if you go into this informational thing here with the checklist you got your maintenance here your tire pressure your oil life your engine air filter life battery voltage coolant temperature your trip information and your fuel economy um, but if you want to pick any piece of information from that checklist those things that i just mentioned you can put those into the gauge cluster you just click on it and hit show in gauge cluster uh, I mentioned HVAC is through here, but HVAC is also controlled down here. It's just a single zone, but it does have knobs. It does have buttons. Your heated seats are also buttons. Everything is accessible for your HVAC. Love to see that. USB-A, USB-C, as well as the wireless charger that I mentioned. Buttons to easily turn off your auto start stop and your lane keep assist. A couple of cup holders in this giant gloss black swath of fingerprints and dust. Electronic parking brake surrounded by a nice little pattern going on and your sunroof here one for tilt and one for one for slide i don't know why it needs two different buttons for that not a big sunroof but it does the job the kids in the back can't really see out of it too well but they do have tons of space back there the roof is a little bit sloped for that sort of coupe like sort of sporty look so they do lose a little bit of headroom but um, my wife is on the shorter side. She's been back there and it was super roomy for her. She's five foot three. She had a friend back there. They had tons of space, no problems. My kids are fine back there in their forward facing seats. Uh, the leg room is great. 38.7 inches of leg room, which is massive for a car that's this size. Uh, and there's no tunnel going through. So that means if you do have to cram somebody in the middle and they don't have to straddle the tunnel, everyone back there does have a three point safety belt. Um, so not just the lap belt in the middle. Nice little touch as well. No vents back there, but they do have their own USB-A and USB-C port. And just generally speaking, you know, like I said, it does it does the job. It, it punches a little bit above its price point. Um, and I, I do like the look of it, especially with this blue stitching here. And really the features are for this price point are, are really pretty good. Really a well done interior and tons of space. I can't believe how much space there is in here for something that is not exactly a huge car. So I've been driving this thing around for the last week. And as I've mentioned in other videos, YouTube is not paying my bill. So I am actually doing the daily commute, I'm driving to work, I'm dropping kids off at school, dropping kids off at daycare, and I am actually doing the normal things that you would presumably do in this car as the target market, a young professional here, a young family type of person. So so on paper, this thing, you know, it's sub $30,000, it's front wheel drive, it's a three cylinder, not exactly super high powered. Expectations for driving dynamics aren't exactly off the charts here but as i mentioned it, it is actually surprisingly peppy because of that turbocharger 
your torque hits pretty early in your rev range, which means that you can actually get moving pretty quickly. It also means that it have been able to overwhelm the tires on a number of occasions. This thing could definitely use some better tires. Um, there, were, there have been a few times where I've tried to sort of merge quickly or take a quick turn to try to get into traffic quickly. And the, I got all, quite a bit of wheel spin. Um, so, you know, good news about the power, but not great news about the tires. Now, if you're starting on a hill or something, it's going to feel a little bit more sluggish. But I've been but I've been pretty surprised about how quick it can move around town and on the highway. Now, that power is going through a six speed automatic transmission. I'm kind of glad they didn't use a CVT. I do prefer something with traditional gears. It could use a few more gears for added efficiency, but it is a three cylinder. So efficiency is still pretty good. As I'm driving down the highway here, it is quite loud in here. There is quite a bit of road noise. Again, different tires uh, will probably help with that as well. But even with the active noise canceling going on, there is, is quite a bit of noise. It's definitely noticeable. It's something I could have a conversation with somebody probably okay with raising my voice a little bit. Um, but if I, I do have to crank the volume on the radio a bit, so definitely very noticeable. The ride quality here, actually pretty good. It actually punches above its weight class in terms of the price point for the ride quality. Um, as I mentioned before, it does have the 19 inch wheels, which means that usually hurts the ride quality, but because it gets the bigger wheels, it also gets the upgraded suspension, the Watsling suspension which does smooth things out quite a bit here. It's also supposed to make it quieter. So again, I can't imagine if I didn't have that, what this, what it would sound like in here, how loud it might be, but definitely noticeable in terms of the ride quality. It rides really nicely. Now safety features here, it does have a few standard safety features, um, but this one having the advanced safety package on it, it gets the blind spot monitoring, it gets the rear cross traffic. Those things are definitely helpful. The adaptive cruise as well, definitely helpful. The adaptive cruise works well um, along with the lane keep, but it's not like a super cruise. It's not gonna keep you centered right in your lane. It's not something where you can take your hands off the wheel, anything like that but it is a helpful feature for sure. If you don't like the lane centering, it's very easy to turn off. There's a button right here, as I mentioned in the interior section, so that's nice. It, it does get a little bit annoying when you're driving around town. On the highway, it's helpful, but when you're around town, like if you have to go around somebody that's off to the side of the road, it'll start beeping at you. It'll try to shove you back in your lane a little bit. So I'd probably turn that off when I'm driving around town turn it back on when you get on the highway and they make it really easy to do that by having the button right there. Uh, this does also have auto start stop, which is a standard feature no matter what trim level you're in. And sometimes that can be really annoying. It can really get in the way. Now, last week I was in that Kia Telluride and that actually had the absolute best implementation of the auto start stop feature of any car that didn't have some sort of electric motor that I've been in. That one, it was like you had to be looking for it to realize that it was happening. This one is actually pretty close. It's not quite as smooth. You can definitely tell that it's happening, um, but I never really find myself waiting for the system to spark up. I never find myself like annoyed by the fact that it's turning off at the wrong time, like the engine's turning off at the wrong time, anything like that. So it's actually a pretty well implemented system in this particular car. Um, now, in terms of visibility around here, it you can see really well out the sides and out the front. The blind spot's not too bad, but the back, because they went for that coupe shape uh, where they sort of sloped the back end down to make it a little sportier looking, it makes the back window like a little bit more oval shaped, like a half oval, uh, which eats into the visibility quite a bit. And especially if you have those headrests up in the back, then it really makes it a kind of pinhole small in the back there. It, it is nice that you can actually tilt the, t the headrests to the side, but still the visibility, even with that whole window being clear, it's not great just because of the shape of that back window. So again, if they had squared it off a little bit more, I know it wouldn't have had the coupe-like sporty shape, but it would have been much more functional in terms of use of space back there. 
and it would have been better in terms of visibility. And if it were flat, then they could put a rear wiper back there as well. So that would be a nice touch. And we do have the backup camera, but that's only if you're in reverse, of course. It is very clear, HD, there are no 360 views or anything like that, just the straight backup cam. But outside of that back area, the visibility is pretty good here. At the end of the day, I think Buick is still sort of trying to figure out where they fit in the GM lineup. They used to be sort of somewhere above Chevy and below Cadillac, but now the upper trims of the Chevys are really creeping into this sort of premium territory. But for something that is sub $30,000, you do have a lot of great features available. It does have a ton of space. I do like the sort of sportier look they've gone for here. Uh, it really is a great car for young professionals or for those young families. So I can definitely see the appeal and it's plenty efficient. And even with that small motor, it is plenty peppy around town. Overall, definitely a nice car for the money. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to hit all the YouTube buttons. The like and the share really help me out the most. Help me get into more cars. Help me bring more cars to you. If there's anything that I missed, if there's anything else you want to know about, if there are any cars you're looking to hear more about, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.